Hello and welcome to my tropical style garden here in the UK. It's June the 1st and it's been one of the wettest winters on record followed by a dull wet spring. But apart from that some of the garden is still looking really good green and lush. So join me in having a look at what my favourite border is right now. So this is one of my shady borders on the right side of my garden nearest to my house. It's mainly fat sears and ferns and a few grasses and generally plants that are all hardy. There is a couple of tenders in there but mainly plants that can take all but the worst of our weather and are actually loving all this wet that we've been having. So. I'm going to start off with this, which I've shown many a times on my channel. This is my Fatsia polycarpa Edward Needham form. This new growth, you can see, comes out more this lime green, but then will mature to go back to this dark green. It will be pretty much the same, similar look if you've got Fatsia polycarpa green fingers and if you look at this flush on this it's done absolutely brilliant this year and this isn't actually the highest part of the fats here if i try to go up there you can see that's probably nearly at getting close to nine foot up there and this is actually the offshoots from the base from years ago which are growing forward where that growth at the top is obviously growing up. It gets, all this bottom is obviously pretty shady um, where the top growth does get a fair amount of sun over the Schifflera rhododendrifolia. And then we've got that Trachycarpus fortuni there as well, which helps sort of um, break down the sun a little bit. But going round here is much more shady so if I go down first, we've got some group planting of Carex Everillo, hardy, evergreen, lime green. Love that plant, spoke about it many times. Then we've got some general ferns. These might even be native ferns for all I know. I can't remember where they actually come from. And we've got some of these, the green mundo grass, which is an Ophiopogon. And then here behind this post is my Regersia bronze peacock where this new growth comes out this lovely sort of burgundy colour and then that will mature to a darker green. Now that plant, because this is, if I go down here a bit, you can see that this is a raised border behind rocks. So for Regersia that probably isn't that good because when it's really sort of dry in summer it does drain really quickly and this is probably the plant in this border that i have to water the most so going round we then have a few of the fat seers so we have this fat seer spider's web i think there's three in that border so that's one that's two and then this tall one up there because I didn't just want to put one in I wanted to sort of group plant it and sort of have that if you look it in shady spots it really does sort of brighten up and this year especially a lot of these spider webs all over the UK have been pushing out lots and lots of really white growth um, moving round we then have this fern looks absolutely the best it's probably ever looked with all the rain we've had i think and if i go to the edges of these leaves that might help you identify it i think it might be dryoptis crisper the king if i'm wrong please put in the comments and correct me um that's what i think it is then we have another Edward Needham form 
because I like to group plant and multiple plant, as you've probably seen. Now, this one, compared to the other one, and I don't know whether it's a, because this is in deeper shade, but this one never seems to curl like that. Whereas if I go round, this one always does it. Now, you'd think that might be a moisture thing, that might be a sun thing, but even the deepest shade leaves do it and the new growth does it whether it be a wet year or a dry year so i don't know whether it's a climate thing or whether because edward needham is just a seed grown variety that there is a natural variation i would think it's probably more the climate thing so going around we then we're going from the sort of fatsia border there is a fatsia variegata in the background there as well now question out there for you lot if you've got fatsia variegata a more mature one does it ever flower and set seed for you have you ever had berries off it because all of my other fatsias have produced berries and i've had seed off them i've had seed off the spider's web which i've grown which can come true with the variegation i've had seed off the fatsia polycarpa which comes true i've had seed off the fatsia annalise which is now sold as camouflage they don't come out with the green and green variegation they come out all the ones i've grown anyway have only ever come out plain green but my variegata has never produced seeds so i've never had the chance to see if they just all come out plain green so anyone that's tried please let me know because i'd be interested to know I did see one in Cornwall many years ago with berries on it that were ripe. I think I took a few and honestly, I can't remember if I even sowed them because I can't remember the results. I think if they turned out variegated, I would have remembered. All right, let's go around here. So I've got another spider's web there. I did say in one of my videos before that I felt this was a mistake having one big group there and then a single one there and I was going to change it but because they've done so well this year I don't think I'm going to it looks really lush it really brightens up that spot but to sort of complement it a bit I've put in this tender begonia which has been kept frost free in my greenhouse over winter now this one is called begonia avia if I remember correctly and it's got these really dark foliage even in the shade and it seems to be producing these now little red flowers and i think it's a great addition to go next to this other carex everillo because the lime and the dark i find really does sort of contrast well and then against the lighter colors of this fatsia spider's web now going up the bit i'm not happy with but i'm not going to change for now but this is just a variegated privet that's been in for many years and I haven't got around to doing anything with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prune all this lower growth back off, but probably next year now because I don't want a really big gap here. And then I think I'm going to plant maybe my Acuba gracifolia or some shade loving shrub with a real contrast in leaves um and then just prune all the bottom of that so that just creates like a tree above it so let's move back out so that care x was planted as a single one whereas the one over there was planted in a group and i just wanted to sort of see and feel how i felt about both sides to that and i think it really works well in the group but in this sort of circumstance next to the water feature i felt the single one was much more architectural and contrasted much more with the plants next to it so i've kept this as a single and planted pretty much all ferns around the water feature so this is a dryoptris fern and i will put the name up for you so you can uh, understand the pronunciation 
and there's my water feature and behind it is lots of I've group planted lots of ferns and there is different types of fern there because I just wanted that sort of really relaxed fern type green leaf around the water feature and also it complements really well going up to my other two large tree ferns that are there right I thought I'd have a quick look around this bit I don't know if the camera is showing it up well but I sit under here and I'm really really happy with it at the minute I think it's looking probably the most lush it's ever looked and um, I'm really excited about watching this bit progress and for the eagle-eyed ones out there of you you might notice that I've been doing another little project I have said in previous videos that there's a gazebo to go above here I am working on that you can see the legs and the framework and if I go upwards you can see I've been building a frame so when that's all done I'll get that and show you what I've done got to get some thatch roofing and that for it yet so it's going to be a little bit first but I'll put that in a tour video right any questions please leave it in the comments hope your garden's doing good despite the bad weather I know a lot of it probably isn't especially if you grow many tenders but um, give us a like and thank you very much for watching. See you soon.